NPR uh, interview with Matty Jackson, who's the deputy chief executive of Claes, and you know that Claes is all about articulating the alternative and showing the alternative. Today we're going to be talking about community wealth building, a key part of our work in building an economy for all and creating social justice uh, across the UK and beyond. So, uh, Matthew, explain a little bit, how did we get into this community wealth building uh, activity? What, what inspired us and what triggered it, if you like? Yeah, it wasn't so much a, an inspiration, it was a, a frustration with the way in which economic development and regeneration policy have been undertaken in the UK over the last 30 years. Despite uh, significant amounts of investment in physical regeneration schemes, our communities simply were not getting the benefits from that. Instead, there was a very kind of narrow approach um, focused around trickle-down, um, where kind of there'd be a, a small proportion of benefit for those particular communities from, from that investment. Uh -huh. And so we've seen there was a problem, and then we kinda, you, we've seen there's a problem with existing economic development. And of course, we got interested, didn't we, in the kind of commercial economy, public economy, and the social economy, and how they all work together in local places. And that took us down the line of like the public economy, isn't it? The public spend in yeah. localities. And it got us to think about that. Explain a little bit of that thing. Yeah, that I mean, through. rather than focus upon investment into localities, uh -huh. we started to think about existing wealth. Um, yeah. And one of the key components of existing wealth within a place is what, it, what local authorities in particular spend through their procurement processes. So I think in the, in the UK, um, local government spends about £80 billion pounds a year buying goods and services. What we didn't have an understanding of, of was at that point is where that money went, what impact it had upon local economies, mm -hmm. what wider impact it had through the organisations that were delivering those goods and services. Uh, and then once we got an understanding of that existing public economy wealth, public spending, we then sort of thought, what can we do to make it more pro-social? To work better for people and for places. Yes. And explain a little bit about that because we got into public procurement then, well, didn't we? Evidence was always the starting point uh -huh. in our work, um, and what we wanted to do was really try and understand in a particular place where procurement spend went. And we we started working in, in Manchester in 2008 um, to understand where about 357 million pounds worth of spend went. So the extent to which it was spent in the local authority boundary, why the Greater Manchester, and then what happened to it once it reached the supply chain. So what were those organisations doing with that resource, and what outcomes were they delivering against? Were they creating jobs? Were they creating apprenticeships? Were they providing support to the voluntary uh -huh. community sector? And it was that ripple effect of that public spend on businesses, on um, a community voluntary sector, on social enterprises that so interested us. But of course, it's not just about the local in that sense, isn't it? We, got, we then got interested in the totality of public spend across a range of public institutions, which mm. took us to America and now it's got us to Europe. Explain a bit about that totality of yeah. what we call anchor institutions yeah. in places. Yeah, that's right. Again, we had a, a realisation that it wasn't, this wasn't just about local government. There's a range of other institutions within place across the public, the commercial and the social sectors, which create lots of jobs, yep. uh, they spend lots of money through procurement uh, uh, po uh, processes and they own and um, manage a range of assets and land within that particular locality. What we wanted to do was to try and understand how that entirety of wealth could be harnessed more effectively to bring benefits for, for people and for communities within, that, within localities. And that's what's got us started in work in Preston and now in Birmingham and in 11 cities across Europe. So we're trying to change the whole economic mindset of the way in which places approach economic development and regeneration through the concept of wealth yeah. building. Completely. And that's why it's so uh, voracious and the potential is huge, isn't it? Because we're actually trying to... Um, uh, reimagine what an economy can do and how public money works within those particular localities and how institutions behave in those localities. Yeah. So where do we go next for this work? What do you think is going to happen in terms well, of this community wealth building piece of work that we're engaged in? What we're trying to do is re-democratise mm. economic development. Um, all places across the globe face significant challenges, whether that be around kind of poverty or inequality. We see the kind of the harnessing of existing wealth as a key way of addressing some of those big wicked issues that our places, places face. So it's down to kind of working politically with uh, local authorities and other institutions within place to kind of change their behaviour, to change the way in which they approach economic development. Yeah, it's extraordinarily catalytic in that. And so, yeah, we've got a lot of work to do, Matt, haven't we? We have. It's looking good. So thanks for that, Nate. Great. All right, all the best.